Duke center Kyle Filipowski appears to have avoided major injury after the storming in Winston-Salem when the Deeks knocked off the Devils. School did say a little sore. His status for Wednesday's game against Louisville is up in the air. On Monday, Duke head coach John Shire and Kansas head coach Bill Self addressed their concerns with court storming. However people feel, uh, that can't happen. There, there's a ton of attention on Flip, but if you go back and watch Jerry McCain, there's a student face-to-face -face with him. It's a dangerous situation. The ACC needs to do something. Like we, There has to be something done uh, to protect our guys. At the end of the day, players and, and coaches and, and officials are the only people that belong on a court. And uh, so, yes, something should be done now, like immediately. Well, I, I certainly don't think it ever should be let them do as they want. That was one of the quickest ones I've ever seen. I mean, that, that happens so fast. And if you don't have the proper security in a situation like that, uh, uh, it, it would be hard to imagine that fans do not come in contact with visiting players, which could lead, obviously, to injuries or maybe uh, 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 legal things down the road. So uh, I, I would hope they could just totally do away with them. One big thing. So what are we going to do about court storming? It's become quite the topic of conversation after this past weekend. What happened to Duke's Kyle Filipowski cannot happen. If you want to go frame by frame and act like it's his fault, you're out of your mind because it was not. And I start there because that was the incident that really amplified the conversation and has some suggesting forfeits, which is an unnecessarily harsh punishment, in my opinion. The Wake situation had a very long list of factors which played into it. Their head coach Steve Forbes was on the warpath about his team not being in Joe Lenardi's bracket heading into the weekend. And I agree with Steve that the Demon Deacons were already a tournament team before the game. But on a Saturday afternoon in a packed house, everybody in there knows the game massively improves the tournament hopes of the Demon Deacons if they win. Oh, and by the way, you're playing Duke. They are an accelerant all on their own. The game is high tension, high level, and the Joel was an absolute tinderbox, and you could feel it. Deeks had to have it. If they won, it was going to be a scene. And when they did, it was. And here is where I put the onus on the people in charge there. You had a plan to park the cars of all the fans who came to the game. You had a plan to feed them at the concession stands. You had to have a security plan for the end game if you win, knowing what happens if you do. It's also on the fans to not allow bloodlust for the moment to turn into big game hunting like you're allowed to trample players in your way. They belong out there and you don't. Go back to Chris Chambliss rounding the bases after he homered for the Yankees to beat the Royals in the playoffs in 76. Those are Yankee fans and he was absolutely obliterating people. You want to know why? You come on the field or the floor, you get what you get. Players absolutely can protect themselves if you're hell bent on acting like an idiot. Go back and look at what people in the garden got from Larry Bird when they came on the floor after the Celtics beat the Lakers in the finals. That was mayhem. That was a storming. Mostly, though, the term court storming is a misnomer these days. More often, it's kind of a photo op. We followed LSU knocking off Kentucky last week, and there were plenty of fans out there. But all you saw were phones in the air so everybody could get their video to put on the gram. Some of them were with the head coach. Everybody seemed to be having fun. LSU gets fined 100 grand, which they pay directly to Kentucky, and that's a check you're more than happy to write if you're the Tigers, if everybody's just being honest here. And that's mostly what you see now. It used to be this only happened when it was a win of historic significance. Now it feels like it's any win over a ranked team or a rival, and largely without incident. But the possibility of the worst possible outcome means every school and every fan base has an obligation to be able to execute a plan to keep the people safe in moments that are meant to be celebrated. As for the fix, I don't see an obvious solution here. Fines don't impact the fans. Forfeits, come on. Hey, wait, great win. Sorry, now it's an L. That's a tad extreme, no? Jay Billis suggests everyone that gets out on the court should then get arrested or get a citation. I don't know what the max capacity of the jails in Winston-Salem is, but that would have been untenable Saturday. Something, though, is coming. The volume's getting louder and louder to stop this. The joy of Saturday and the Joel is what makes the sport great. Smart people ought to be able to figure out a way to protect that. But let's start with protecting the people who are supposed to be on the floor 
in the first place.